the topic of uh, uh, walking humbly with God. As I shared on Tuesday, uh, the Lord gave first the Ten Commandments at Mount Horeb, the Sinai area, to Moses. He added 603 more commandments. There are 630 in the Old Testament. And all summed up by Micah, through Micah, to three commandments. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Lord said to his people, to Micah, that you need to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And that's even valid for us today. And it's a heart of God that we walk with him. He loves us so much that he knows that without closeness to him, we won't be effective not only in our lives, in our ministry, whatever. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And therefore, he, he longs for us to be close to him. God's word reveals God's will. And James chapter 4, verse 8, God's word says, Come close to God, God will draw close to you. Come close to you. Old Testament also. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together unless they agree to do so? Now, on Tuesday, we spoke about how walking with God and humbling oneself both go hand in hand. As we humble ourselves, we will learn to walk with God. As we walk with God, we learn to humble ourselves. It's like faith and word. We receive the word of God by faith. And as we have faith, we are able to understand more of God's word. Because uh, through God's word, we have faith and faith comes from hearing the word of God. And as we grow in faith, we are able to obey God joyfully. So the same way, humbling and walking with God both go together. And uh, Proverbs 3.34 says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. The question came on Thursday I shared with you. What comes first, walking with God or uh, humility? And I believe humility comes first. Because even to accept Christ as Savior and Lord, we have to humble ourselves. To receive grace, we have to humble ourselves. Some people think they're very, they don't need God as a sprite to think that you don't need God. We humble ourselves, receive this salvation. And thereafter, as we grow in the Lord, we constantly call to humble ourselves. James 4.10, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6, where the Bible exhorts God's people to humble themselves. So on Tuesday, I began to share about how God has given resources for us to constantly humble ourselves and in that process, find walking with God a second nature, a, a natural result of humbling and learning from God. And we, we looked at the life of Moses, how according to the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 3, is written about him. He was a very humble man, more humble than anybody else on the face of the earth. And being a humble man, he cried out to God for a revelation of God. And even though God told him that he had found, that uh, God had found Moses pleasing to him, he was not complacent. He responded by saying in the book of Exodus, 33rd chapter, verse 13, if I have found favor in your sight, teach me your ways that I might know you and continue to find favor with you. So we spoke about how two ways by which we can humble ourselves on Tuesday. Number one was to focus on the cross and uh, remember the message of the cross, number one. That message keeps us humble because we will realize as Gentiles, we have no relationship with God except to the cross of Christ. And through the cross of Christ, we are coming to a, the kingdom of God. is entirely the grace of God. Salvation cannot be earned. It cannot be worked for. It's received. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not from us. It's a gift of God. Not by works that no one can boast. So, remember the cross will keep us humble. Number two, we spoke about remembering who we were at the time we turned to Christ. So many problems, so many uh, uh, aspects of life are far away from God, sin in our lives. But in spite of all that, he accepted us and he began to change us. So we can't take pride in ourselves. We take pride in Christ. We are supposed to boast of Christ. So second way of humbling is to remember who we were when we were called. 
That's why the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, from verse 26. Think of what you have when you are called. Not many were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish in the world to shame the wise. He chose weak things to shame the strong. He chose the lowly thing, the despised thing, the nullified thing that I don't get boast before. So we were at one time of no consequence in the world, a face in the crowd, but now we are very special people. The delight of God, the apple of God's eye, a crown of splendor in God's hands, all because of the grace of God. I'm going to go on from that. The third resource for us to humble ourselves constantly is to remember that who we are today, what God has made us to be today, is because, again, of the grace of God. In 1 Corinthians 15.10, Paul writes, By the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God working with me. So what he became ultimately is by the grace of God. He didn't achieve anything. He didn't asp- he aspired for being like Jesus, no doubt, but he didn't achieve anything. He received. All of us received grace to be able to imitate the life of Christ. The one who makes us more and more like Jesus is the Holy Spirit. At the point of time we turn to Christ, a veil covering heart has been removed. They can begin to understand the scriptures. And in 2 Corinthians 3.18, Paul writes, And we with unveiled faces all reflect God's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes us more and more like Jesus. Now, when we go about serving God, living for him, our life changes. And people come and tell us nice things about us, how we are today, how we were before. At that point of time, please don't forget it's because of the grace we are what we are. As Apostle Paul said, we are sometimes getting carried away by what people say and we think we have achieved something. Even in the case of the Israelites who enter the land of Canaan, before they cross the river Jordan, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, 17 and 18, Moses tells them about after they enter the land of Canaan, how God gives them the land, he'll make them prosper, and he, want, he wants them, gives them a caution. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hand is produced well for me. But remember the Lord your God, who gives the ability to produce wealth. So every good thing is from God. So today who we are is because of his grace, entirely his grace. So thank God for his grace. Because everything we need for life and godliness have been given to us freely. Now, when the Apostle Paul was compared by the Corinthian church to the to other apostles, like Apostle uh, uh, Paul compared to Apollos, for example, there were divisions in the church based on allegiance. Some said, I follow Paul. Some said, I follow Apollos. And Paul was very, very clear. He was a very humble man. Very humble man. After becoming an apostle, he says, I am the least of the least of God's people, less than the least of God's people. Ephesians 3 8. So you address the issue of comparisons by telling the writing the Corinthians, who's Paul, who's Apollos? They're only servants. First Corinthians, third chapter, six and seven. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God gave the growth. Neither he who plants anything nor he who waters, only God who gives growth. And then he goes on to explain to them, 4th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 1 and 2, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it's required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. What he's saying is both me and Apollos, uh, just people have been entrusted with certain, certain secret things. God gave this to us. He goes on to explain in verse 7, who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have which you did not receive? And if you received it, 
Why do you boast as though you did not? We receive grace. We don't work for grace. We don't achieve blessings. We receive blessings. From the fullness of His grace, we receive blessing after blessing. Unlike in the Old Testament time. Sometimes we get confused with the Old Testament time. Old Testament time, blessings were conditional to obedience. Blessings for obedience, curses for disobedience. In the book of Deuteronomy 28th chapter, we read how God told Moses to tell the Israelites after they entered the land of Canaan, from Mount Gerizim, six tribes of Israel would pronounce blessings for obedience. From Mount Ebal, six tribes will pronounce curses for disobedience. So now we think when we are blessed today, oh, I've been obedient to God. That's why I'm blessed. No. Notice I mean grace is showered upon us because we are purchased by the blood of Christ. We don't earn blessings. John 1.16 From the fullness of his grace, we receive blessing after blessing. So what we are today is by the grace of God, we can't boast about the gifts God has given us. We should boast about the giver of the gifts. So number three is remembering who we are today is entirely by the grace of God. Number four is to ask God for his wisdom. There are two kinds of wisdom in the world. Wisdom of the world, wisdom from God. In the book of James, chapter 3, 13 to 16 talks about worldly wisdom. 17th verse talks about God's wisdom. And when we look at worldly wisdom, it's explained about how in the passage is earthly and spiritual of the devil. When you have God's wisdom, one of the expressions of God's wisdom is humility. In James 3.13, we read, James writes, Who is wise in understanding among you? Let him show by his good life, but deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Humility comes from wisdom. A straightforward statement. So simple it is. And the most amazing thing is, amazing grace of God is, this wisdom of God is available for every child of God. God's will is every child of God has his wisdom. That's why in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, we read, James writes, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, it will be given. You should not even doubt. God shows no favoritism. He knows the importance of us having his wisdom. Because in life we face so many situations. I mean, God's wisdom to respond to situations. Difficult people, difficult circumstances, disappointing, discouraging, troublesome, fearful, all kinds of problems are there in the world. But then as God's people, we have God's wisdom, we will know how to respond. Humility comes from wisdom. It's so wonderful to know this, this progression, this, this, this process. As we humble ourselves, we receive grace. And we have to humble ourselves, he gives us wisdom. The wisdom, we humble ourselves, we receive grace. We receive grace, we can live for him and we can serve him. It's only by grace we serve him. It's only by grace we exist in this world. And therefore, wisdom is mandatory for us. So God's word does not say, if you want wisdom, ask God. If you lack wisdom, ask God. And wisdom manifests in so many ways, practical ways by which we we will know how not to react to people, not to get provoked with uh, provocative statements. If we look at Proverbs 19.11, it says, A man's wisdom gives him patience. This is glory to overlook an offense, to overlook an offense. When people offend us, they get hurt, we, get, we react. To overlook that, we need God's wisdom. We are offended so many times. We get insulted and hurt because of pride is hurt. When you have wisdom, you'll overlook it. You won't endorse that action of the other person. You'll overlook it. Don't take it to heart. Same time in love, correct that person. Also in the book of Ecclesiastes, 7th chapter, 8 and 9, we read, 
the end of the matter is better than the beginning. And patience is better than pride. Don't be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Wisdom gives us patience. Wisdom gives us humility. So keep on asking God for his wisdom. Every day ask him for that particular day. To respond to people and situations, please ask him for wisdom. We stop asking God for wisdom only when you feel we are full of God's wisdom. Now, when you have wisdom, the two more aspects of humbling ourselves will be manifest in our lives. We will know how to respond to praises from people. Sometimes flattery, ignore it, ignore flattery. Sometimes, in fact, I would say most often when your life changes, you'll get genuine praises for the life that you are living. People generally say, you have changed so much. I wonder, I'm so touched by your life. At that time, don't undermine that particular statement. That is false humility. Please remember, we are the workmanship of God. And he works in us to make us better people, to make us more and more like Jesus. When people recognize that, don't underplay it. Rather, give glory to the Lord. Tell them very clearly. It's by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am what I am. It's like, you know, I always tell this, use this phrase, remember the donkey. It's because Christ lives in us that our life is changed. He's working in us. He works in and through us. So when people see our lives, the workmanship, they don't know there's a workman behind the workmanship. We are the workmanship. He works in us. All glory goes to the person who's working in us. When you see a beautiful painting, you appreciate the painting, the colors, the oil, the canvas. But the most important thing is the name underneath the painting, the one who painted it. So please give glory to Jesus. When the donkey came down the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem, 21st chapter of Matthew, the first eight verses, we read about the story. And they were all singing Hosanna to, to the Lord. And as they came down the Mount of Olives towards the east gate of Jerusalem, the disciples put their cloaks on the donkey and Jesus sat on the donkey. The common people put their cloaks on the ground and Christ was sitting on the donkey. Who walked on the cloaks? Not Jesus. They were honoring Jesus actually, who was on the donkey. But the donkey walked on the cloaks. The donkey had the privilege of walking on the cloaks. That area even now is full of stones, big thick stones from Mount Olives towards the East Gate, a slope going down, 500 feet above, above the level of the gate of the East Gate of Jerusalem, 1.1 kilometers. A Sabbath's journey. Sabbath journey means 1.1 kilometers. A Jew can't walk more than 1.1 kilometers on a Sabbath day. That's why called Sabbath journey. So this donkey came for the first time on soft surface. All the time it comes in up and down from the Mount of Olives, Hard ground, rocks, there's a balance itself. Today, something special. Why? Because Jesus is sitting on the donkey. They go to Jerusalem. The Lord gets off the donkey. Donkey goes back home. As Jesus promised, nobody put cloaks. They put cloaks only because Jesus was on the donkey. So when people praise us today, it's because of Jesus in us. He works in and through us. The Apostle Paul spoke about how, in Galatians 1.15 onwards, how God was pleased to reveal, God was pleased to reveal his son in me, he says. He's pleased to reveal his son in me. So God reveals Christ in us to others. So when they see us, they'll think it's us, it's not us, it's Christ. And therefore, remember the donkey. Nobody put clothes in the donkey, went back. When people praise us, it's only because of Jesus. So give him all the glory. I tell people very clearly. When people tell you, especially non-Christian, tell you, who is a wonderful person, you change so much. What's the secret? What do Christians say? God's grace. Saying God's grace is only half the truth. God's grace that came to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Glorify his name. Christians they conveniently don't want to mention the name of Jesus because others will be offended. Why only Jesus? Why not other gods? That's the name by which we are saved. 
It's a name by which you are transformed. So boast about that name. So fourth point is a uh, fourth point actually is uh, wisdom. Fifth point is uh, remember the donkey. Or at the other way around. A fourth is uh, remember the donkey. Fifth is recognizing that difficult people coming your way is a means by which God wants to keep us humble. First, to remain humble. I'm going to take the example of the thorn the flesh, a messenger of Satan tormenting the Apostle Paul. And when Paul had received great revelation from God, God saw in Paul the tendency to become proud. He was still a humble man. But there was a tendency in his heart to become proud. Because God sees the heart. And the thorn the flesh was given to him, allowed by God. Thorn the flesh, comma, messenger of Satan. A messenger means someone who has a message. And the apostle Paul prayed, take it away, take it away, Lord, three times. The Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And when he understood why this thorn the flesh came, he says, I delight in insults in weaknesses, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. But I'm weak, then I'm strong. Second Corinthians 12, chapter verse 10. He understood why this messenger of Satan came his way. Verse 7. To keep me from becoming conceited. Because of the great revelation, the given on the flesh. To keep him becoming conceited because of his great revelation. So the revelation he got, and being human, he could have become proud. But before he became proud, God allowed this person of Satan to come and torment Paul. And he understood that to keep me humble. Therefore, he said, I delight. In what? In insults. Because he knew insults means it's a reminder that his ego is being resurrected. On the cross, crucified, now being resurrected. Sometimes when difficult people come our way, they are allowed by God to come our way. To keep us humble. Everybody praises us for a change in our lives. They all praise us for the gifts God has given us. Forgetting the giver is more important than the gift. You can go uh, to our heart. Normally we say, no, he's gone to his head. When a man becomes proud, he says, he's gone to his head. It's not gone to the head, it's gone to the heart. Because pride and humility is a matter of the heart, not the head. So don't say gone to the head. That's a secular way of saying Heart is what God sees. And therefore, when you have wisdom, we will know how to handle praises. We will know how to handle insults. We will realize that this person has come my way to ensure I am humble and don't get proud because of this great revelation God is with me. And sometimes, because of the revelation that God gives us, a knowledge of God and His word, we can develop something called spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. Being proud of the gifts God has given us. The wisdom of God, we will not be proud. Because wisdom teaches us humility. You will know how to handle praises. Don't under, underplay praises. Give it to Jesus. Say, Lord, because of Jesus, I'm, I'm like this, tell people, grace of Jesus. And acknowledge that you have changed or you are changing. But it's because of Him. He is working in you. I mean, people insult you, they let. Thank God that Lord, in my weakness, you are strong. In my weakness, you are strong. So I delight in you, Lord. Finally, number six, beautiful uh, expression of uh, this uh, amazing love of God is humility. Love. Love is the greatest. After receiving salvation, through Christ, we can receive the love of God. Romans 8, 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him for us. Hallow we not, along with the Son, graciously give us all things. Through Jesus, we can receive the love of God into our hearts as we grow in the knowledge of God. And this love, I'm never tired of quoting this passage about love, agape love. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 4 to 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy does not boast, it is not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, 
Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. It is the truth. Rejoice in the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. All these aspects of love are manifested in God's love for us through Jesus. And we are supposed to manifest that because we are called to be godly. Two aspects I want to focus on in today's context. Love does not boast, it is not proud. When a person is proud, he boasts about himself, achievements, who I am, what I have done, what I have. Love does not boast. Love is not proud, which means love is humble. When you have the love of God, you won't boast, you won't become proud. And in that process, what happens? We receive more and more grace from God. And as we humble ourselves constantly as an act of the will, proactive humility, we are better prepared to receive more and more grace from God. In that process, what happens? We're able to understand the word of God. Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. God says, Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Where is the house you built for me? Where my resting place be? Has not my hand made all the things that came into being? This is the one I esteem declares the Lord. He was humble and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. When you're humble, you tremble at God's word. Not an unhealthy trembling, but a reverence to God, reverence for his word. Remember the time when the angel appeared to Daniel and told him, you are highly esteemed. 10th chapter of Daniel. Verse 11 and 12. You are highly esteemed. For since the day you set your mind to gain understanding and humbled yourself before God, your prayer was heard. Set your mind to gain understanding, understanding of God, and humbling. When you humble yourself, you can receive more and more from God. Be able to walk with God. We can't walk with God without obedience to His teachings. He will reveal His teachings as we humble ourselves. Psalm 119, verse 130. The unfolding of his words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple, to simple people, people like children. God finds pleasure in revealing mysteries to children. Children uh, meaning people who are childlike, teachable, moldable, humble. Remember the time when 70 of his disciples came back after driving out demons? They were very excited. Lord, demons submit to us in your name. Like, like a, they found a new toy to play with. Demons submit to the name, Lord. They're full of excitement. They hadn't explained that before properly. And then the Lord tells them, don't rejoice because demons submit to you. Rejoice, your names are in the book of life. Then at that time, he, he prays to the Father. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Spirit, tells the Father, I thank you, Father, God of heaven and earth, that you hidden these things from the wise and learn it, and reveal to children. Reveal, revelation to children. For this was your good pleasure. God finds pleasure in revealing mysteries to people who are like children. Moldable, teachable, humble. We must become like children to receive more and more grace from God. And as we humble ourselves, we'll be able to walk with God and rever Him, rever Him. We read about Levi in the Bible. Levi or Levi, I don't know how to pronounce it those days. Let's say a Levi, a priest. We know that God didn't give the Levitical priesthood land in the land of Israel, in the land of Canaan, no physical land. There are 12 tribes, one among them is Levi, 12 portions of land. And Levi's land went to the half tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh, sons of Joseph. There's no uh, Levi figured in the land. They got cities of refuge, cities to live in, but not land. But God made a very special covenant with them. A special covenant. God told them, first of all, I am your inheritance, I am your possession. You don't need land. I am your possession, I am your inheritance. But then, in Micah chapter 2, 
5 to 7, the Lord says about Levi, my covenant with him was a covenant of life and peace. And I gave them to him. I gave them life and peace. This call for reverence, he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth. Nothing false was found upon his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and turned many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge and from his mouth when you seek instruction, we were the messenger of the Lord Almighty. What a beautiful passage. Later on, you can meditate upon that. Three verses, five, six, seven. Malachi 2, 5, 6, 7. God told uh, about Levi. I made a covenant with him. I gave him life and peace. And from his side, required reverence. He revered me. Stood in awe of my name. And he goes on to say, he walked with me in peace and uprightness. Levi walked with God and he revered God. Now, being close to God, being intimate with God does not imply being familiar with Him, fighting with Him, questioning Him, arguing with Him. You rever someone, you won't argue, you won't fight. True reverence to the divine being, God Himself, sovereign God. How can you fight with God? How can we question Him? In a negative way. You can question him in a the, the positive way, wanting to know. Like Mary asked the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? Genuine question, out of interest, out of humility. But then don't argue with God. That's because some people tell me, oh, I'm very close to God. You know, I fight with him. I argue with him. They rever God. Levi revered God. He called for reverence, this covenant. You rever me? God told Levi, I'll give you life and peace. And he walked with God in peace and uprightness. We are also today called to be priests. You know that? We are all priests. First Peter chapter 2, 9 and 10. We are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And as priests today, we decide on behalf of people to God. When we revere God and we have a mindset on the Holy Spirit, we'll have life and peace. We are called river God and the same way as a Levi did, walk with him in peace and uprightness. We preserve peace and uprightness as we obey him. Now as we humble ourselves, what happens that only we will be able to understand God's word, understand his will for us and being humble and teachable, we will obey him. They have a passion to obey my priest. To be able to obey him, he will give us the power to do so. I told you about wisdom. Wisdom will teach us God's will for us. The Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Colossae. They were known for their faith in Christ and love for each other. In Colossians chapter 1, from verse 9, Paul writes, since we heard about you, we will not stop praying for you. Asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through spiritual wisdom and understanding. Which means wisdom given by the Holy Spirit and understanding given by the Spirit. When we pray this, we may live lives worthy of God. Praising him in every way. Bearing fruit in every good work. Growing in his knowledge. Mission with all power, cross, glory, might. Placing him in every way. I told you earlier like, on Tuesday about how when Enoch walked with God, Enoch, 300 years he walked with God. How did he walk with God? By faith. Faith enabled him to please God all the time. And today, to please God all the time, at all times, in God's wisdom, to know his will, he'll reveal his will. And he'll give us strength to obey his will. So we'll realize we need, we have been given everything we need for life and godliness. In a walk with God, when we cry out to God for his will for us, Lord, reveal your plans for me, reveal your will for me, reveal your word to me, Lord. He'll surely do so. And as he reveals his word to us, 
and we ask strength to obey him, we'll walk intimately with the Lord. We'll have communication with the Lord because we have the Holy Spirit living inside us who will help us to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 26, 27, one of the works of is to help us to pray according to God's will. Not only that, he will take from Jesus and make known to us. In John 16, 14, Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, He'll bring glory to me by taking what is mine and make it known to you. So he's a, a messenger between God and us. Mediator. Between Jesus and us. Help us to talk to the Lord and take from Jesus and make known to us. And he lives inside us. So really having a walk with God means practical terms having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship. Talking to him, listening to him. He'll always lead us in the way of holiness. The Holy Spirit makes us holy. He will reveal God's will to us by giving us spiritual wisdom and understanding. Nathaniel is for people who are humble and teachable. Understanding to the simple. Be like a child. A child, very, very, very young, later on may change, are so much dependent upon the father and the mother, isn't it? Totally dependent. We are also called to be totally dependent upon the Lord. Totally dependent upon the Lord. Apart from we can do nothing. Now as we have this way of life, a life of prayer, a life of fellowship with God, we find when the Lord chose He spent a whole night in prayer. Luke 6, 12. Whole night in prayer He spent. The morning he chose 12 people, called them apostles. After he chose these 12 to become apostles, in Mark 3, 14, 15, we read, he chose 12, called them apostles, that they would be with him. And he would send them out to preach and have the authority to drive out demons. First, be with him. Today he lives inside us. So easy for us to be with him. Simply to come to him and say, Lord, you are in me. I want to listen to your voice and walk in step with your spirit. His spirit will lead us. The hallmark of a Christian is he or she will be led by the spirit. Romans 8.14 As many as are led by the spirit of God are sons of God or daughters of God. Going back to what I shared on Tuesday, Galatians 5.25 Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We have all been given the Spirit to come and live in us. So walking with Him simply means we walk in step with the Spirit and led by Him. And the moment He speaks, we are called to act. And first to know His will, He'll give us discernment. One very important gift for all of us to ask God is the gift of distinguishing between spirits. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter verse 10. Because we hear so many voices. God's Spirit speaks to us. Evil Spirit can speak to us also. You can also quote the Bible. He quoted to Jesus. Out of context. Our own spirits can speak to us. Our minds can pay. Very clear. The training. That's why in 1 Timothy 4 7, Paul writes, Train yourself to be godly. So as we constantly humble ourselves, we can constantly hear his voice, and we always go to him, need to go to him for his counsel. Old Testament time, Psalm 32, 8 and 9. The Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you have to go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Don't be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bitter and bread, or they will not come to you. The Lord has given us every resource we need to be able to walk with Him. He reveals His word to us. When our hearts are humble before Him, we set our mind in understanding, we'll understand things of God. God's word reveals God's nature. And when we read, the Bible to know God, 
we know him personally and we can know when something we are contemplating against his will, his nature, we will know it's not from God. If you contemplate something against God's will, you know it. Old Testament time, God told them, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, we turn right or left, you hear a voice saying, this is the way I walk in it. We tend to go right or left, there's a voice behind you saying, walk in it. In the way God has path, set a path for you. And therefore, none of us can say, I won't be able to walk with God. I'm not able to walk with God. Don't let the world, things of this world, draw you away from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Evil one will try to take our minds away from the things of God. And therefore, as we choose to have close fellowship with him, our life and misty will flow from that. Remember the time when Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, makes a very bold statement before Sanhedrin. Acts 4.12 Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we can be saved. Made an amazing statement, bold statement before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. Verse 13 says, about the Sanhedrin people, the Jewish Holy Council. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, realized they're unschooled, ordinary people, they were astonished. But they took note that they had been with Jesus. They heard these people speak like this boldly. They are unschooled, ordinary people, not went to theological training. They're astonished at the boldness. But they took note they had been with Jesus. So our life in mystery should flow from being with him. In fact, he lives inside us. How beautiful to know that. So simple for us to have fellowship with him. Don't let the evil one draw you away from a sincere and pure devotion. He'll start off with the mind. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 3. Paul is, exp- is sharing his concern for the Corinthian church. I'm afraid that it's like evil received by serpent's cunning. Your mind will be led astray a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So as we walk humbly with God, we're able to walk with God. As we walk with God, we learn to further humble ourselves because sometimes when we, our lives are changing, we'll find the devil trying to make us proud. If he can't pull us back, he'll push us forward. Oh, you're doing very wonderfully well. Look at the way people are praising you. And it goes to our heart. Pride enters our heart. That's why the Apostle Paul had Blake told to Timothy, told wrote to Timothy. First Timothy 4:16. Watch your life and doctrine closely. So we also have to watch our life, not become proud. Doctrine, make sure the teaching is correct by discerning from God through God's Spirit. And watch your life that you walk closely with God and make sure that you walk in step with the Spirit, in step with the Word. Living by the word, Matthew 4.4. 4. Living by the spirit, Galatians 5.16. Living by faith, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. May God bless us. I'm going to continue on this theme on Sunday, maybe even on my next Tuesday. I see I'm going very slowly actually, you know. And a lot to cover on this aspect. Very important aspect for all of us. All of us can walk with God. We're all God's children. Let's make an effort to say, Lord, I want to walk with you. I agree to